God, rest in peace. Amen. In Anam Anahar, Agus and Vic, Agus and Spirit Nefa. Amen. Church and state have performed their ceremonial duties, and now this last moment or two, the time for the families once more to claim their dead. You see members of the bearer party coming, each carrying a wreath, and they be presented in turn to representatives of the family. Just in case you've tuned in, the news is delayed as you just witnessed this very moment the handing over of the wreaths from the army to members of the family. For the Barry family received by Adam O'Rahilly, a grandson of Kevin's sister Eileen. On behalf of the Moran family, Barty Moran, a nephew. On behalf of the Whelans, Jack Whelan, a nephew. On behalf of the Doyle family, granddaughter Kavina Daniel. And on behalf of the Ryan family, Arnyani Callaghan, a niece and the only blood relative of Bernard. Then for the Bryan family, nephew Jim Phillips. And on behalf of the Flood family, Sean Flood, a nephew. And then for the Trainer family, Len O'Sullivan, a grandchild. August Minter, uh, Ifaulu, John Quish. Now the Tishuk making his way to the rostrum for a formal oration, accompanied by his ADC. Rukhtaran, Mwintana Heron, Tommy Balihan Shahnu, in no most on Detnor Oleg, Oleg, and for a Balser on Grok, a prison one show, a son of Sersha, a son of Heron, Tommy Iligalaher. Then a dashi dana a cur a greix sedera, la hanur aus le dinet. Togmi galer komar satamid, we come on a detnor far og shot. Komat la hoglik ille na heran, on amashin ida ir agus mina. In od ibert a rinishi da ligant in narmid eg minta na heran, agus ni lig for good joe. On koga katrichid, we cool talk a wan. Who are a fader nafsim a yena day? Win old Tawakan, meaning he gauge a, a hoktiog. We isago garev nadina lo. The thorough now tongue on old Tawakan shin, honig on than kedal. Our fashnish nafs dalkish na heron a ain't to a co. Dorton count corle lesh na takti illig. Go hug coladina ku. Go joki koga on the thorough na fashnesha. Higgeter sin. We say sauce of a cockacor concerts in the hero of Wantamak. We say rote and on cork tea vora, or mahalesh and na shum yoga on kade kogi down a day. We meet in the heron danginja, go gahi principal on ainkanal na shunta, a latnu ko father the heron. Kurakon vas ne fear oga shot, the hin kogi ne sersha. We enter gamor if we brew her anam. I will say, kill again, I ain't a hair. Tough egg meant in a heron, we doll errand a forbid lehi, Daniel and Kogig a very shul. We undaint a hiss a hort a rain satir. We saw in the shares of Fekahege, or the detner og, saw a verseed boss. He she can make air a sair, I was naps black. The intas are behe marshin, Gamor and meant in a heron, go on a lash or tagahe. Then knowing the will, Dockerty, the kids are trained to fain again. Neil dinner for all to send tear shot. Not Yavin or Mahan Rode, or Willemy or Corner Far Shot and Shot anew, or some Mihid Eyal Yenev. President, we are gathered here today to honour the ten volunteers who died on the scaffold in Mount Joy Prison in the cause of freedom and the cause of Ireland. We are all here to lay the remains to rest in this isle. At last, with dignity and honour, we all understand how much we owe these ten young men and all the volunteers of that period, both men and women. 
Their sacrifice has not been forgotten by the people of Ireland, and it never will. In the war they fought, they had one support that could not be ignored, and that was the mandate for independence from the general election of 1918. They knew the people were with them. Dull Ireland was formed from those who were elected and who were willing or able to attend. And when the Declaration of Independence was passed, the Count Corlea of that first doll said to the deputies present that they all understood that war would be the consequence of that declaration. They understood that. They were satisfied, if necessary, to fight to liberate the country. The big powers had said that it was for the small nations that the First World War was fought. The people of Ireland were determined that the principle of national self-determination must all be extended to the Irish nation. And during that first session, the democratic programme addressing the economic and social needs of Ireland was also adopted at the request of the Labour movement with a view to a general and lasting improvement in the conditions under which the working classes live and labour. These ten young men were executed during the War of Independence. The country was under tremendous pressure at the time. There was united effort. Meanwhile, elected by the people, Dáil Éireann was developing in spite of a war going on. Democracy was being put in work. Independent civic institutions, including the Dáil courts, were beginning to function. And before their deaths, the ten had seen the light of freedom. They understood that Ireland would be free and independent. The ten men were Kevin Barry, a UCD medical student of 18, with roots in County Carlow, Thomas Sweelan from Clifton, Patrick Moran from Roscommon, Patrick Dial, Bernard Ryan, Frank Flood, and Thomas Bryn, all from Dublin, Thomas Trainer of Tullow, Edmund Foley and Patrick Marr from Galvin in County Limerick. It is no wonder to the people of Ireland then that this day has come. And although we have difficulties of our own time, there is no fair person in this country but thinks that it is good that we bury these men with state honours here today, and indeed that it is time we did so. The Irish state today is discharging a debt of honour that stretches back 80 years. Here in Glastonevin stands the memorials of Irish patriots of the past two centuries. Statesmen, soldiers, all who contributed in many ways onto the onward march of a nation. Nine of the Irish volunteers executed in Mount Jai in 1920 and 1921 belong here in accordance with the wishes of their families. Patrick Marr will be interned next week in County Limerick. This is a day that has been sought for many years with the support of successive governments. All of us wish this to be a unifying occasion in accordance with the wishes of the families today who have assented to their reinternment. The men we honour belong to a period when the entire national movement was united in a tremendous effort to achieve Ireland's independence that was desired and voted for by a huge majority of the people. War for whatever cause and whatever circumstances always has cruel consequences. But every nation, both large and small, has a right to defend and vindicate its freedom in accordance with the will of the people. If an Irish national democracy could have been established peacefully through elections or by passive resistance, that would, would, have, would have been preferable. But a realistic reading of history shows government determinations to prevent that and by force if necessary. The ten volunteers executed in Mount Jai died defending and upholding the independence proclaimed by Dáil Éireann on the 21st day of January of 1919. The British Government of the day, who would relinquish control of this part of Ireland in 1922, were seeking in vain to maintain their continued rule by force, long after popular consent had been definitely withdrawn. Erskine Childers, who with Desmond Fitzgerald was charged with explaining the Irish case to a wider international audience, stated that Kevin Barry was doing precisely what Englishmen would be doing under the same circumstances and under the same provocation that what was involved was a major uprising collision between two governments, one resting consent, the other on force. The area of Ireland outside the six Ulster counties, six Ulster counties, having rejected the limited home rule offered by the Government of Ireland Act of 1920, was ruled by a Crown colony form of government with martial law declared in many places. The situation was not greatly different from that of the 13 colonies that went on to form the United States when they decided to throw off tyranny in 1776. George Washington was a 